Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, differential reference counting. <laughs> uh, my name is Palmer Hogan, and uh, a little bit about me is that I've been a uh, longtime musician, music producer. Uh, I couldn't find any piano recital photos, but there's a photo of me uh, DJing. Um, and a little bit of a more recent programmer, uh, after bashing my head against uh, the big blue brick here, uh, you know, I came out on the right side pretty okay. So uh, I now work at Roblox, and uh, Roblox is a creation engine where people can uh, create worlds and upload them to our platform and share it with friends. And a crucial piece of that puzzle is our game engine, which is what I work on. Uh, our game engine is a 15-year-old C++ code base with tons of systems, uh, tons of threads, and several real-time threads, some of which are recording, processing, and rendering audio. And uh, note that I said real-time, which implies deadlines, and deadlines imply consequences for missing them. <laughs> um, so the general rule that uh, Chris kind of touched on in his earlier talk is uh, we don't want to do anything that takes an unknown amount of time. That would be like system calls, mutexes, or dynamic memory management. Uh, and this talk's going to be about how you might be able to actually do the third one pretty OK. <laughs> um, so luckily, atomics solve our problems, right? Like you have some shared data that you're passing around a bunch of threads, and you can uh, stick it into an atomic and load a value from it and store a new value to it. And that's the talk, we're done, right? Like that solves all our problems. Um, unless of course you don't want to do this for integers. Like w what if you have some type T? Well, uh, this doesn't generalize super well. Uh, you might be squinting at those. Those look kind of like copies. Uh, maybe there's non-trivial constructors going on there. But we actually have a bigger problem, which is that like Atomic itself is not actually block free. This might be using a mutex under the hood and uh, you know block your audio thread if you try to use it. Um, so then your load and store are not actually real time safe. Uh, but Atomic pointers, like those solve our problem, right? Like those are basically just fancy, fancy integers and we can load and store those just fine. Um, unless, you want to delete the old stuff. Um, what's the problem with this? Well, we could uh, swap out the current value, and that exchange is lock free. But what if we leased out this pointer to someone and they're still reading it? <laughs> like then we've deleted it uh, while they're using it, and that's no good. And uh, this is about the point where I'm starting to doubt whether lock free programming was a good idea. <laughs> um, but let's trim down the scenario a little bit. Let's say that we have one big blob of shared data and many threads, but it's updated pretty infrequently and on a lower priority thread. It's read arbitrarily often, and some of those readers have deadlines. Well, this is the topic of an active standards proposal. And I just want to say, um, like if you squint at it, it kind of looks like the previous example. You've got a method to get a snapshot of the current state. You've got another method to update uh, a new value, and you've got this try update method. Uh, but we're mostly going to focus on the get snapshot and update method. And this alone is like so, so, so useful. Um, you could have like an audio filter, and uh, the coefficients come in from some other thread, and you just want to load a snapshot of the current coefficients and use them. And if, if uh, get snapshot is sufficiently real-time safe, then this is real-time safe. Um, you might also have something a little bit more uh, interesting like the observer pattern. Like maybe you have an event and a bunch of observers are watching it. And you can load up a snapshot of all of the things that are watching it and notify all of them. Now I have that bit highlighted in yellow because uh, it's a little sketchy. Like you don't know what notify is doing. And uh, this is the only context I've heard a coworker say the phrase accidental recursion. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe that's what you want, but maybe not. Uh, but I want it, right? And I want it before I look like this. Uh, and maybe a more accurate title for this talk would have been implementing snapshot source, how hard could it be? Uh, but I wanted to give that build up to get there. <laughs> um, 
And it turns out there's a really, really compact implementation of this snapshot source interface if we just use atomic shared pointer. Um, you know, you, you have uh, the current state held in an atomic shared pointer and then you load and store uh, on that atomic. And there's no locks here, right? Like, I don't see a lock. Um, that move is a little sneaky. That move is moving a unique pointer into a shared pointer, which is constructing a reference count. But if we don't care about the update method being real-time safe, like this, is, this seems fine. But there's a little bit of a more dastardly uh, um, spot that this gets you. Because I've said that a snapshot pointer is a shared pointer, and we're returning a, a shared pointer, essentially. Well, what happens if my, uh, my filter here gets to the end of scope and it's the last one holding the bag? Um, then it's going to do a deletion, and that's potentially blocking. Um, but we can fix that, right? Like, we can have a list of all the stale snapshots and then at a time of our choosing, call cleanse on them. So when we update uh, with a new value, we exchange it out and push the old guy onto uh, a stale list. And then we know that we can delete a, uh, a snapshot if its use count is less than or equal to one, that being, like, the only version is in the stale list. And, here I'm kind of hand-waving away the weak pointer side of uh, the interface, but we'll get there. Um, and then cleaning up the garbage is a matter of iterating over the stale list and erasing all the things that have sufficiently low uh, reference counts. So this works, surely, right? Um, well, unfortunately, no. Uh, Timur Doomler did a wonderful series of talks last year on how you could implement a lock-free atomic shared pointer, but uh, the one that we have here is probably not. And even if it were, uh, it would be doing conceptually two distinct operations. It first has to load the pointer and then add one to the reference count. And if we want to minimize this window between the two where you know, anything else could happen, we would have to do some kind of cast loop, like a retry loop. And then, like, this is lock-free, but it's not wait-free anymore. Um, and that's the point that I started squinting at this equals sign. Like, we're saying that a snapshot is a shared pointer, but is that actually, like, what we need? What parts of shared pointer do we need? Do we need to know how many exist? Do we need to be able to take a weak pointer and get back a shared pointer from it? Do we need custom deleters, type erasure? And I'm going to say no. The only thing we care about is don't delete me. If, if I have a snapshot, get your deleting hands off of it. So a very, very bare bones snapshot pointer maybe has like five functions, a constructor, destructor, and then like ways to dereference it. And Dmitry Vukov has an article called Differential Reference Counting that Timur actually uh, referenced in his talk as a means to implement a lock-free atomic shared pointer. But I would argue it's even more powerful if we don't care about that, because it lets us be really lazy. Um, the idea is we're going to take uh, a typical reference counting scheme where the object and the reference counter next to each other, and we're going to split it apart. We're going to have uh, an inner structure that actually holds the data, and it has one reference count. And we're going to have an outer structure that points at the inner guy, uh, and it has another reference count. And the snapshot source will hold an atomic outer, of which there's only one. The current uh, object is managed by an outer. Uh, and we give each snapshot an inner. So it doesn't do anything in its constructor, but in its destructor, it de uh, decrements the uh, reference count. And the scheme here is that the outer reference count only ever goes up. Uh, so, you know, great investment opportunity. <laughs> Um, and the inner, the inner reference count only ever goes down, uh, so, you know, don't be like this guy. Um, but somehow, I claim that if the reference count of the inner is zero, that means we can delete it? Like, how does that work? I thought it only went down, like it's gonna underflow through the floor. Um, and the way that we make that work is that in our update method, we'll modify it slightly. Uh, we're still going to, you know, make a new uh, inner object to encapsulate the thing we're moving in, and we'll still exchange it with the old thing and push the old thing onto the uh, stale list. Like, that all looks the same as before. But the bit that we've added is at the moment 
one of these outer uh, structures becomes stale, we transfer all of its references to the inner structure. And this essentially makes it whole again. It was underflowing through the floor, but now we've added all of the outer, the outer count to it. So now it's, you know, if, if there's nothing referencing it, it's zero again. And this is still problematic. Like the outer structure is too big. It's got a pointer and a 64-bit ref count. This is gonna rely on 128-bit atomic instructions, which are not universally available. But we can do something about that um, because there are other parts of the shared pointer interface that are kind of implied. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, none of the devices I'm running on care if there are four billion snapshots of the same thing. Um, if you've taken that many, you've probably already run out of memory and <laughs> you've got other problems. So with that in mind, we can make the reference counts 32-bit. Um, the unfortunate casualty of this is that uh, if we stored a pointer to the inner structure, uh, it would still be too big. So we have to also settle for an index to the inner structure. Um, but that lets us essentially treat this outer struct as if it were a UNT64. We can have like all of the index bits in the lower 32 bits, all of the ref count bits in the upper 32 bits, and whenever we want to add a reference, we add to the upper bits. And even if this overflows, it's never going to tamper with the index bits because we're adding by increments of like 4 billion at a time. Um, so our outer structure looks a little bit different. It's uh, moved the index and ref count to be methods rather than fields, but uh, more or less the same. And we do some bit shifting and masking to get the index and ref count. Uh, so now our snapshot source uh, has this kind of awkward array that we have to index into, but it's literally storing an atomic 64-bit uh, int, which is good. Um, and this, this array also kind of replaces the need for a stale list. So, um, you know, maybe it's not so bad. Um, and our get snapshot method becomes like really cheap, wait free even, because we're just doing a single fetch add and then uh, obtaining a, a, a snapshot from indexing. And uh, update now may spin because this make inner call might have to look for a available slot in that array that it can uh, uh, put, put the new value into. But um, a note on that array, right? Like this array, I've mostly written it as a fixed size array for brevity. Uh, truthfully, you could re replace this with a container, as long as that container has uh, suitable conditions, uh, you would want something that has a weight-free way to index into it. And if you're gonna provide a way to push new values into it, that can't block indexing. So this could be you know, something like a pool or a, a linked list or maybe some kind of deck. You've got options here. It doesn't have to be fixed size. Um, so in summary, uh, snapshot source is coming soon. Um, whether that's C++26 or, or what is up in the air. Uh, but if you're impatient like me, this pattern can be implemented today and it can be used to uh, great fun and profit and real-time safe code. <laughs> um, so I wanna give a special thanks to people who reviewed this slide deck in my code, namely Chris, Dimitri, Keith, Richard, and Ryan. And uh, thanks for listening.